What's going on at the rescue mission? Tell me now. But we're not going to do it. Thanks for coming in. Yeah. You're welcome. Uh, I'm just kidding. Pleasure to be here. That's right. And we'll do it again sometime, okay? Absolutely. Just, okay. Um, uh, you're the new executive director of the rescue mission. And uh, just talk about what that means. Um, there's, a lot, uh, there's a lot to do over there. Absolutely. Um, I'm very pleased and proud to serve as executive director of the rescue mission of Utica. The rescue mission has really 10 distinct programs, everything from a clothing program that gives away clothes and food yeah. to community meals, to a homeless shelter, to transitional housing, um, an addiction crisis center, and um, a large low-income housing unit. I didn't count, but did you do 10 just there? I think I said 10. Yeah, yeah. I think it was pretty that good. That was good. Um, okay. And obviously this is a an opportunity to... Uh, some will say, well, we're bringing people into the area. These people are here for the most part. Absolutely. They're and, locals. And the idea is, the concept would be to put them in a position where they can be constructive members of, of society. Completely. Um, someone could come into our homeless shelter and have different problems, addictions or not, just have, say, they're down on their luck. Yeah. Then they could go to our learning center. And they could take online classes for high school equivalency or even college online classes. If they have problems managing their finances, we could help them out with our rep payee program. And then they could apply for housing in our low-income housing, or we could help place them in appropriate housing for them. And they could be back to uh, productive members of society. What, what are your numbers looking like now? Our numbers overall for our different programs, I could tell you... In 2018, we served approximately 155,000 hot meals to homeless wow. and underprivileged individuals. We provided 18,000 nights of care for men and women in our enriched living center, which is our residential mental health um, program. We've had approximately 18,000 shelter nights of care to homeless men at our shelter. And it was a cold winter. I mean, absolutely. Long. One thing, it's still going on. Yeah. yeah. She's <laughs> raining. <laughs> One thing that really uh, hit home to me when I started there is I was speaking to the director of the homeless shelter, and he told me no matter what time of the day, if a man comes in, the first question is, when was the last time you've eaten, and do you have dry socks? That hit home. That That's how how cruel life could be to yeah, some of these people yeah. if that's the first question. Just things you and I yeah. take for granted. We open a yeah, drawer, about and there's dry socks. Mm -hmm. We go to the kitchen, and there's food. Right. But... For some of these people coming in, that that's not their life. And I, I think those stories really bring home the work of the mission. Uh, I know you want to promote a couple of things before we uh, throw you right out the door. And I apologize <laughs> for that. Um, but I, I, where are you from and what's your background and all that? I am a local, born and raised in Utica. Okay. I live in the uh, house I grew up in. Um, went to school at SUNY. I have an MS in healthcare administration and an MBA from RPI. Nice. That's uh, so we we didn't go from outside to take care of this. That's no, good. no, they found me local. It's a good thing they found you. You were hanging out there. Um, <laughs> hanging out. And you have a, you have a banquet that's coming up. And is this a yes, fundraiser? Sir. This is. Um... Um, it's sort of a fundraiser in a celebration. Okay. It's a graduation ceremony for um, those men and women that completed our Skills for Success program which was a partnership with MVCC. Mm -hmm. And it's also a graduation program for those men who've graduated from our Parker House program. Okay. Um, so you can come out. The speaker is, is, is extremely interesting, and it'd be a great story to hear. He actually went through our program and um, went back to college and is now employed by the mission. Wow, that's as awesome. As a case manager. That's so awesome. you can come out and hear him speak. And when, uh, when uh, where, how? Absolutely. It's Monday, May 13th, 6 p.m., at Tabernacle Baptist Church, which is, you know, yeah. beautiful downtown Utica on Hopper and Clark Street. And uh, do numbers change? My last question. Do numbers change in the summertime? Obviously, winter, there are points where, and yeah. I think that's the law today, right, that uh, we as a society in New York State New do not State, allow people, yes. once the temperature gets down to a certain certain low, um, but is it different? Uh, obviously, it's got to be different in the winter. In winter, the shelter numbers do go up. Yeah, they go up. All the other numbers pretty much remain consistent, but in winter but we see But alcoholism and drug up. abuse, that stuff. That's consistent that stuff goes, um, yeah. 365 days a year. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, the New York State laws, I believe. And the police have to intercede at some yeah. point. And yeah, I believe when it gets to shelter. freezing level, if you see a homeless person, you have to pick them up and take them physically to a shelter. Mm -hmm. um, has that increased your numbers? I would imagine it has. In winter, definitely. There's yeah. The men's shelter numbers But you up. have some very strict rules. 
um, in the shelter. Um, you can't come in and put other people in danger. No, you can't come in and put other people in danger. You can't smoke. You can't consume alcohol. Or oh, you obviously can't do, smoke. Uh, they can smoke outside, but not yeah. inside. Um, and you can't obviously use illegal substances. Okay. All right. Well, listen, congratulations, uh, Wendy. Welcome. Thank you. And we'll do this again, I'm sure. C- can I promote one more of it? No. No? Okay. <laughs> no, go ahead. <laughs> well, I'll do it He's anyway. He's feeling feisty today. I still have Bill Burrell in my head. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, it's not going to happen. I'm kidding, Bill. I know you are. June 13th is our golf event at the beautiful Twin Ponds Golf Course. Okay. So if you golf, you want to come out and play golf, or if you just want to volunteer, or if you want to support it in some way, you Good can uh, raise us money. out. Cool. Raise money. All right. Again, congratulations. Thank you.